in the classic here. Where should I begin when I'm starting at the end? Pursuing the higher aim, learning the meaning of every page. Ooh, where should I begin? Assalamu alaikum. Suna followers presents a new class, the Mukassid of Tafsir, being taught and brought to you by Ustada Leila Nashiba. Please stay tuned. Streaming on all major platforms, right here on channel Suna followers. Okay. Ina alhamdulillah, wa salat, wa salam Allah, wa rasulullah. I want to welcome everybody to our, um, this is our series on the Mechosidic, Mechosidic Tafsir. And this is the book that we're using for this class. It's also written by Sheikh Karim Abu Zaid. The book is only 1890. Please go to Amazon. This should be a part of everybody's library. He has a, this is a series too. And inshallah, I plan to cover all the books in this series. This is the first book, volume one. You have to learn how to crawl before you can walk. So we're starting with this book. And tonight we're going to be discussing how in order to give the correct uh, understanding, the most correct understanding of the words of Allah. So as in turn, we can implement them in our lives. The interpreter needs to also know if a verse was revealed during the Mecca phase of the prophet's life or the Madani phase, the Medina phase of his life. That's what we're going to be. Oh, ouch, something bit me. Oh, mosquito bite. I hope it was a mosquito and not a Spider, we got, I saw a spider early. Hope I didn't get bit. Tiba, if I got bit by a spider, you got to come get me. Heard them things called cellulitis. Okay, I saw a spider. My cat was trying to eat it. I thought the cat ate it. Maybe he didn't. Something sure enough bit me. But anyway, Supona Allah, guys, uh, um, we're going to speak about how the interpreter has to also know whether or not um, uh, a verse was revealed during the Mecca or the Medina period of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's life, because we're going to talk more in detail about it, because something, it means something more. So, but before we get into it, the last time we met, we discussed, let me put it, the PowerPoint up, hold on. Yeah, hold on, let me, can y'all see it now? <laughs> I'm sorry. I thought I had the PowerPoint up. Now you see it? Yeah, so this is it, the science of Mecki and Madani. Wait a minute, let me put this down. Yeah, pages 80, not, uh, pages 79. You got your book? Wait a minute. She's, <laughs> I just got through eating. Okay, hold on. Let me let her get her. Pages 79 through 81. So everybody should have their books out. Uh, because inshallah, I'm going to be covering these pages today. Yeah, I'll give you a second. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, I just got through eating. I had to rush it. Yeah, I got me a Starbucks. I'm going to drink it in a few minutes. You know, I had to uh, save the best for last. <laughs> okay, you got your book? Okay, good, good, good. Okay, so we're going to be covering pages 79 through 81. but. Before we get into that, I'm going to give you a quiz because the last time we met, we spoke about how in order for an interpreter to give you the most correct meaning of a verse of the Quran, there's other things that has to be considered too. 
and we talked about the events. The interpreter must know the events surrounding a revelation. Remember we talked about that the last time we met? So now who can tell me why is knowing the events around a revelation important in explaining the meaning? Who can answer that? Yes, why is the, the events surrounding the revelation important in explaining the meaning? Anyone, go ahead. Because you have to know the surrounding um, meaning behind it instead of interpreting your own self. So say for instance, like um, it happened during the Medina period. So no, Mecca period. And that Mecca period is when the time when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was just teaching um, Tawheed about Allah. And then if it happens during the Medina period, that was the time when Allah uh, uh, started sending his laws and his rules. So you need to have the understanding of uh, what happened in the events surrounding it before you open up your mouth and say your own interpretation. Exactly. Well, you know, you have to know the who, what, where, when, why, because the law didn't just speak out of. Well, there are several verses other than those several verses that we talked about before. There are just several verses of the Quran or several revelations that Allah sent down that he sent down and there was no event surrounding it. But everything else, like I told you guys, the Quran is the words of Allah. It's not the creation of Allah. It's the words of Allah. And something happened to cause Allah to say whatever he said. So we have to know the who, what, where, when, why. We have to know the history of what happened in order to interpret and explain it correctly. Otherwise, like you said, like she said, we would be twisting stuff around to mean things that they don't mean. Good job, Mina. What about this? We also spoke about how some verses of the Quran are al muh al muhkam which are clear cut verses. Some of the verses of the Quran are clear cut. Who can give me an example of a clear cut verse of the Quran? A clear cut verse of the Quran. In other words, it means exactly what it says. Give me an example of a clear cut verse. A clear cut verse is a verse that's not open for interpretation. It means exactly what a law says. Give me an example. Y'all, there's a lot of verses like that. Come on, y'all can think of one. What's something uh, that the law says? Okay. Kill. Exactly. That's an example. Thou shalt not kill. That's clear. It's clear. It's not open. It's not open. It can't be distorted. We just we cannot kill unjustly. The verse says, you know, do not take the life of another person unjustly unless it's for, you know, adultery or a life for life. Other than that, we can't just go around killing things. So that's not open uh, to interpretation. That's clear cut. What's another example of a clear cut verse? Anyone? Well, let me ask this question because one of the people, the new Shahadas, asked me about this. Is there a clear cut verse in the Quran addressing suicide? Is it, guys? Is there a clear cut verse uh, addressing harming yourself? Let me say it that way harming yourself. What do y'all think? Yes, good job, Fatima. Yes, there are. Allah says that we, it forbids us to harm ourselves, to intentionally harm yourself. Anyone who intentionally harms himself, has committed a grave sin. So that's clear.
Good job. That's another example of a clear cut verse. If something is clear cut, that means that's it. It's not open for discussion. But unfortunately, exactly like the sister here is saying, we have some brothers <clears throat> today, the YouTube celebrities that like to sit on YouTube and play with the words of Allah. They'll tell you that there's two different types of harming yourself and there's two different this. No, Allah is clear. This, uh, that's not open for a reinterpretation or debate. Good job. And also the last time we met, we talked about general verses. General verses of the Quran. And those are verses in which other verses are similar to it. There is a general verse that can include other verses of the Quran. Oh, I gave the answer. Oh, yeah, because I was asking, I was answering your question, Brother Edward, and y'all, y'all see, I gave the answer. <laughs> yeah, Brother Edward. But yes, this is the other kind. The gen he like Brother Edward was. <laughs> I, that was on the quiz, Brother Edward. But yes, the general verses of the Quran, that's different. Exactly. There may be this one verse may address many other issues. It's not clear. It's not clear like uh, those other other kind. Good job. And I think I got one more question. Okay, here it is. Of the two different kinds of verses, which of the two? Uh, I had to take that. It was my mother. All right, let's get this going because can y'all hear me now? Zoom people, y'all here too? We hear you. Okay, good. I'm sorry. Did y'all hear me talk to my mother? Did y'all? No. No. Yeah. My, you know, you know how my mother is, Tiba. We'll talk about it later. Mm -hmm. Let's get this done. Which of the two cannot be given a different meaning by another interpreter? The general verses, the clear verses, or both? Good job. The clear verses. That's what clear means. That's what exactly what clear means. They cannot be uh, inter uh, used to be interpreted any other way. Okay, so mashallah, let's get to the lecture. And I'm, I apologize, guys. I had to. My mother is overseas. I had to take that. Okay, let's go to this one. Wait a minute. Now, there's another science. There's another science that, that the interpreter has to use in order to give the most accurate meaning of the verses of the Quran. And that science is uh, the uh, ability to identify if a verse or revelation was revealed during the Mecca period of the Prophet's life, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, or the Medini period. And this is real important. I'm gonna show you guys why. Wait a minute. And uh, because, and also just to let everybody know, we talked about this last week. Remember it was during a caliphate of Abu Bakr when they, after the battle of Yamama that Mukhtar talked about, after the battle of Yamama, that's when Abu Bakr was, was the one that ordered the Quran be written into the form of a book because they had memorized it by heart, the verses, but uh, they wrote it into the, the Mus'haf during the Caliphate of Abu Bakr. And so the science of the Mecca and Medina verses, they explain the order that they're put in and everything explains is really the history. It's really the history of the development of Islam. And you have to know what was happening. You have to know uh, uh, when this verse was revealed, when this sword was revealed, because it's crucial. Because life in Mecca was not the same as life was in Medina. Does everybody understand that? They have different styles of presentation, the verses do. Because remember, Islam was revealed in stages. Allah did not send down the words of the Quran in one day. It was over a period of years, years. And the Muslims' faith grew more and more each day, okay? So we have to know the characteristics 
that the people had during the time that they were in Mecca, as opposed to the characteristics the people had when they were in Medina. We have to know what was happening during the Mecca period, as opposed during the Medina period. And again, the Mecca period, this was the beginning of Islam. This is when the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam spent the years teaching the people what it means to believe in Allah. While the Muslims were in Mecca, they focused on developing their Iman, and developing, uh, understanding what their purpose in life is, understanding that only Allah is worthy of worship. This is the time spent learning Allah's names, uh, understanding Allah's names and attributes. This is the time where the prophet talked about what it means to believe in paradise, what it means to believe in hell. He talked about the jinn. He talked about the unseen. He talked about life and death and all of that. What it means to accept the Qadr or the decree of Allah. So the Mecca years were spent teaching and educating the Muslims of the pillars of faith, the articles of faith, belief in Allah and his angels, his books and all of that, okay? And this period of history for us as Muslims also uh, taught uh, the prophet taught the people how to the Muslims how to call the people away from shirk tools that we can use to advise the unbelievers how we can get the unbelievers to recognize that a rock doesn't hear you when you speak to it calling upon the dead is not going to be of any help for you. And also this period, the Mecca period, it gives answers to the, the most crucial questions that people ask who are interested in trying to develop that spiritual relationship with something that they know is greater than themselves. So this is why it's important very, very important to know when each surah was revealed. What period of time was this when the prophet was trying to help the companions to get close to Allah spiritually? Or was this the time that they were already spiritually attached and they, were, uh, they had to learn the laws and, and conditions? Okay? So that's the Mecca period basically the period of development of our faith development and understanding of our belief system whereas the medina period is different it wasn't until the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the and the companions migrated to medina this is when allah began to send down the laws the rules okay the obligations we are, we have to do. This also constituted how to live amongst other people in peace. As Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her, says, the first thing that Allah revealed was a chapter from El Mufasal. And here in that chapter, Allah was speaking about paradise and hell. And then when the people converted to Islam, it wasn't until after they converted to Islam that Allah sent down the verses about the lawful and the unlawful. If Allah had sent down the lawful and the unlawful first, the people wouldn't have converted. Okay, so again, guys, that's why it's important. The Medina period, this is the period when the faith was there. So this is the period in which Allah sent down the lawful, the unlawful, and things like that. And not only that, Allah also sent down how to live amongst other people and get along with them, how to be just, how to live and establish uh, Islamic rules 
And if you're not in a condition where you can establish Islamic rules, how to live in a non-Islamic state and still abide by Allah's rules. So the interpreter of the Quran has to know these things because otherwise how can he take a verse and analyze it and compare it to a theme that we are faced with today in society today if he doesn't know if the uh the verses that he's uh relating were sent down in the beginning to help build faith or if they were sent down after that to build the the laws and and rules and conditions. So that's all we wanted to go over today, guys. You know, these two pages here, the Mecca period, the Medina period. What you guys need to realize is this, whenever you hear a scholar of the Quran, or like you hear Dr. Uh, Asim, Dr. Jamali, Sheikh Saud, If you hear any of them say, oh, this verse was revealed during the Medina period, okay? Know that this verse is probably going to relate, that these verses are probably going to relate to laws, commands, rules, regulations as to how to get along with people. And then if you hear uh, them say, oh, this surah relates to uh, the Mecca period, like he did when he said the phallic and the nas, okay? When uh, uh, no, Eklos, when Sheikh Saw taught you guys the meaning of the Eklos, he said this was sent down during the Mecca period. That should tell you that this surah, this surah, who who Allah, who Ahud, it's gonna relate to Tawheed. It's gonna relate to the foundations of belief. And that's what cool who Allah, who Ahud does. That is one third of the Quran because that surah is teaching you about Allah, okay? The names of Allah, the attributes of Allah, okay? El Fatiha, when he talked about when that was sent down, okay? That was the Mecca period. So that's why it's important to know the difference between Mecca period and the Medina period. Okay, so I'm going to stop right here. Subhanakalahuma, wabihamdika, a shadow on.